Have you been troubled with sciatica, that's pain in the back that radiates down the back or the side of the leg, or maybe you've also noticed some tingling and numbness in the leg or the foot or weakness down the leg? My name's Anthony Gosh, I'm a consultant spinal neurosurgeon and founder of the Spine MDT, and in this video I'm going to go over the five stages and treatments of sciatica. In this diagram, we can see the stack of bones that make up the spine. And in between the bones are these soft cushions called the discs. And here we can see a disc herniation pinching the nerve. And here's a cross section again showing the disc herniation here trapping the nerve. And this is what causes sciatica. Stage one is the acute phase. Everything in the region is very inflamed and the pain can be quite severe in that phase. So what I usually advise patients to do in the first few days not to have any aggressive treatments done, any manual therapy or any physiotherapy, because you just simply won't be able to do the exercises or go through the manipulations with the therapist. I usually advise some simple uh, painkillers, paracetamol, ibuprofen, perhaps speak to your uh, general practitioner about taking some opioid-based um, painkillers such as cocodamol, just to get over that first phase of pain as it usually starts to subside um, in that period. The most important thing to do during this phase is to try and walk through it. The pain will be severe, but the evidence suggests that if you move around, it will subside a bit quicker. The worst thing you can do is just lie on the couch all day. It will just take longer for that pain to subside. Now we're at stage two. You've tried some painkillers, things have settled down a little bit. They're not quite as severe, but the pain is still bothersome and hindering you. The next thing we can do is try some physiotherapy or a visit to an osteopath where either practitioner will try a manipulation to create a kind of vacuum effect here in the disc space that helps suck this disc back into the disc space away from the nerve and that can help alleviate the pain radiating down the leg stage of treatment is called flossing if the pain is still there. This can actually be done in parallel with the manual therapy described in stage two, but it depends on how much pain you're in. The idea of this treatment is taught to you by a physiotherapist or sometimes an osteopath, where these stretches try to loosen the nerve, help it slide around that point of compression of the disc and also give it some slack and that can help alleviate the pain radiating down the leg doing all of the above, but the pain is still present and a good few weeks have passed. Well, the next stage of treatment I try is an X-ray guided nerve block. This is an injection into the spine where under some light sedation, a spinal needle is passed through the skin under X-ray guidance and directed towards the trapped nerve. A little bit of dye is injected around it so that we know what we're going to inject goes in the right place and then a mixture of steroid and local anesthetic is injected around the trapped nerve. Whilst you may think this is just masking the underlying problem, a recent study called the NERVES trial compared patients with disc herniations and sciatica. It split them into two groups, one group underwent surgery, the other group had the injection, and it found similar results in both groups. And that's possibly because in most people with a herniated disc and sciatica, the body will just break down that bit of disc herniation, untrap the nerve, and the symptoms will settle. And if all of the above has failed, my final stage of treatment is a procedure called a microdiscectomy. This is a minimally invasive surgery carried out under general anaesthetic through a very small incision in the lower back. Under the microscope, a small window is fashioned in the arch at the back of the spine and that disc fragment that's pinching the nerve is shaved away to free up the nerve and alleviate the pain. I really tend to jump ahead to surgery and skip the other steps if the disc herniation is so big it's trapping all of the nerves in the spine, causing pain down both legs, urinary symptoms such as incontinence or retention, unable to pass urine, and saddle numbness because that's a medical emergency and our job is to try and protect those nerves and give them the best chance of recovery. The same also goes if you develop weakness in one of the legs. We're trying to regain that function or give you the best chance of recovering that function. And that's when I would jump to surgery as early as possible. There are links below to more detailed videos of some of the treatments I've described. I really hope you found this video helpful. If so, please click that like button and subscribe to the channel. And please visit us at spinemdt.com to see how we can help you. Thank you for watching.